Let's move on to the third most common cause of foodborne illness in the United States, inadequate cooking. Potentially hazardous foods must be cooked properly to ensure proper destruction of harmful microorganisms. Cooking temperatures are divided into three temperatures, 145, 155, and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Whole muscle, intact beef, pork, veal, lamb, eggs and fish must be cooked to a minimum of 145 degrees Fahrenheit. All ground beef, pork, veal and lamb, as well as injected meats must be cooked to a minimum of 155 degrees Fahrenheit. All poultry, stuffed meats, and stuffing containing meats must be cooked to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. When reheating foods, it's important to know that reheating is different than cooking. Reheating involves foods that are already cooked. All of these foods must reach a temperature of 165 degrees or more. Using a thermometer is the only way that you can ensure that foods are being cooked, reheated, and held properly. The fourth most common risk factor in causing foodborne illness is contaminated equipment. We have all heard the term cross-contamination, but what does it mean? Basically, it's the transfer of disease-causing organisms from a raw food to a ready-to-eat food. This usually occurs when a piece of equipment is not properly cleaned and sanitized. Here are some tips to prevent cross-contamination after coming in contact with raw meat, poultry, and seafood. Always wash your hands. Always wash cutting boards, dishes, and utensils with hot soapy water. Many people think that if they run their sanitizer cloth over a surface, then they've done the job. The fact is, the sanitizers are poor cleaners. It's very important to wash the surface before it's sanitized. Another tip to prevent cross-contamination is to use one cutting board for raw foods and another one for the ready-to-eat foods. Never place cooked food back on the same plate or surface that held the raw food. Make sure all raw foods in the refrigerator are sealed to prevent leakage of the juices. Store raw meats in the refrigerator according to their cooking temperature. Ready-to-eat foods should be stored above all raw meat, eggs, fish, and poultry. Everything with a temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit should be stored above those that require a temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit, and the food that requires 165 degrees Fahrenheit should be stored on the bottom shelf. And finally, sauce used for marinating should be discarded unless it's boiled before applying to cooked meat, fish, or poultry. A major component in the prevention of cross-contamination is sanitizing. What does that mean? A lot of people mistakenly believe that sanitizing means using an all-in-one chemical that cleans and kills germs. It's important to remember that sanitizers are not cleaners. They do a poor job of lifting debris and grime off of a surface. Sanitizers do reduce the number of microorganisms on a surface to safe levels. The best practice is to always clean with warm soapy water before applying a sanitizer. There are two effective methods of sanitizing a food contact surface, chemicals and heat. There are three acceptable chemical sanitizing methods, chlorine, quaternary ammonium, and iodine. Iodine is rarely used for sanitizing in food establishments. Chlorine or bleach only takes 10 seconds to sanitize. It's cheap and very effective, but it can also be corrosive. Quaternary ammonium, on the other hand, is less corrosive to equipment but can be more expensive and requires a longer contact time to sanitize. Both are widely used and are an effective means for sanitization of food contact surfaces. Be aware, however, that only the proper concentration of either chemical will assure the contact surface has been sanitized. Heat sanitization will only be found in dish machines since the water temperature needs to be at or above 160 degrees at the plate surface. So what do you do with pots and pans that are too large for your dishwasher? you must understand the proper method of washing equipment by hand. First, you must scrape and rinse large debris off of the surface. Second, wash in warm soapy water at approximately 100 degrees. Third, rinse in clean warm water at approximately 100 degrees. Fourth, sanitize using the manufacturer's recommendations. And finally, air dry the equipment. When do you clean food preparation utensils and surfaces? You must always clean and sanitize. Whenever a food contact surface becomes soiled, when you switch between raw and ready to eat food, and in between any food preparation task. It's just like hand washing and changing gloves. You want your utensils and surfaces to be clean before food comes into contact with it. It is also important to remember that storage areas are for clean and sanitized equipment only. A perfect example of this is improper storage of commonly used knives. Often employees will cut foods and then place the knife back into a temporary container without properly cleaning and sanitizing. 
It's also important to maintain equipment because it's hard to clean when there's been too much wear and tear. For example, microorganisms find it easier to latch on to a well-worn cutting board or pan.